in the Arctic right now. It would be completely dark because right now there is 24 hours of darkness. If you would be lucky, you could have some light through the moon. You would feel a biting wind on your face, which you would feel like you have to cover immediately. You would smell fresh air. You could hear cracks as the sea ice is breaking. You would maybe think to run away, but actually you can't, you are standing on a drifting sea ice. You would feel the power of nature. You would feel that actually you are nobody there. You would wonder if there are polar bears around because it's dark and you cannot see them, but they can see you and smell you. You would feel how small you are and you would feel how beautiful this planet is. You would feel completely alive If you imagine polar explorer, what is in your head? Who is the person you see first? The general picture is white, male, mostly with a beard. The only thing I saw in the television were men marching in the snowstorm. I was dreaming to experience that one day, but we lived uh, in Hungary behind the closed borders. And also being a girl, being a woman, was like something impossible to imagine. In my heart, I always felt I'm an artist and I would love to create stories in a visual way. And I do believe that if we send questions to the universe, we will also receive answers. And I won a photo competition. And as I was reading this email, I started to cry because I felt I got the answer for my life. This is photography, what is calling me and what is inside of me. I can live my dream telling stories in a visual way with a camera. I want to work for National Geographic. I want to create stories for the New York Times. But how do I get there? And I, when I entered the school of ICP, of International Center of Photography, I felt that, oh wow, I felt something here inside of me, another calling, something, I got goosebumps and I felt like this is exactly what I want to do. I want to study in one of the best documentary and photojournalism school in the world. And I knew that I wanted during my ICP year to find a group of people who are inspiring and telling their story. I moved next to New York City Fire Department. I started to photograph their trainings and how they live, how they cook in the kitchen. I was in the chief's car, I was in the fire truck, and I was going everywhere with them and having an incredible access, which I felt deeply uh, grateful about. It's a lot of waiting and a lot of just hanging around. When from this slow time, extremely fast something happens. And this switching from sitting around at the kitchen table and in the next second, an alarm went on, all jumped get in their suit and rushed into the biggest danger for people they don't even know. There are so many sadness, so many tragedy in the world and I felt like I want to show the beauty, I want to show that there are good people out there. I found a sea turtle hospital in Massachusetts 
where sea turtles are rehabilitated and treated. And a beautiful relationship started. Volunteers collect sea turtle eggs to incubate them until they hatch. And every year they collect like 17,000 sea turtle eggs. I mainly followed Camps really sea turtles, which almost extinct. And thanks to a group of people in Padre Island, they survived. I received an email from director of photography from Sabine Meyer uh, from Audubon magazine asking me about going to the Arctic Ocean and spending two weeks there photographing climate research. I felt like this type of assignment is once in one million and it doesn't matter, no matter what happens, I will quit my day job, I will quit everything and I'm gonna be there on this expedition. During the very first assignment, I completely, deeply fell in love with this mesmerizing environment. One could think that Arctic Ocean is a boring place because it's only white, but it's actually not true. It is a place full of colors, from yellow, brown, red, purple, blue, of course. And these colors are constantly changing with the sun, with the clouds, and with the moving sea ice. Arctic Ocean is one of the most fragile environments on our planet, where average temperature increases by two to three times faster than elsewhere. Scientists from Alfred Wegener Institute measured that sea ice thickness decreased by around 25% in 20 years. If we lose sea ice, it would mean like losing soil on Earth. And scientists predict that this can happen by 2035. That would mean that we would lose an entire ecosystem. And I feel a responsibility having this access. I'm taking historic images of an environment which is vanishing. Mosaic was a one year long expedition. When Paul Ashton research icebreaker was frozen into the sea ice and drifted to the central Arctic Ocean. Scientists conducted climate research from atmospheric measurements to the bottom of the ocean. What was so special about this expedition that no one before conducted such a deep scientific research during the polar night in the Arctic Ocean. For example, many sea ice cores were taken and scientists were measuring how many methane, this very harmful gas from the climate, goes into the atmosphere after sea ice melts and how much goes and sinks into the ocean. I felt documenting something very historical. We were left alone two, three weeks away from any kind of help. So we knew if something happens, we are there alone with the ship and we have to solve our problems. I felt safe during the expedition because of all the trainings I did before. Including also the polar bear safety training where we learned how to shoot the rifle which we luckily didn't have to use only to scare them away. Or several times we had minus uh, 55 Celsius, which is so cold that if you would touch with your bare hand a metal piece of something, you would immediately get frostbites on your finger. I constantly had pain in my hands to the point where I was just crying. 
something was happening in front of the camera, but I couldn't take a picture because my hands were just not moving anymore. I remember the first time when I experienced the uh, ice breaking. The sea I started to move under my feet like an earthquake. My thought was actually I just wanted to run away. But I realized that you cannot, you can't run away because there is nowhere to run. You are standing on a drifting sea ice and you just have to stand and watch what is happening and just to make sure that you are actually standing on the right side of the breaking ice, meaning close to the ship. Being so disconnected from the rest of the world, that's the moment where I can be there completely in the now. I also find important not only showing the world, but also showing how they spend their life so far away from civilizations, so far away from the family, friends, and being at these very remote places. Practicing yoga even outside on the ship when it's minus 35. We organized a Halloween party. Nobody had a costume, so you had to make your own and my favorite one was TP30 using a space blanket and all the tools he could find in his science office. All our night is 24 hours of complete darkness. I didn't see the sun for three months. The only thing I could use for my photography was the spotlights of the ship. You just see the black universe and it always felt like standing on a moon. And I knew this darkness is going to be what I'm going to miss the most. I saw the sun for the first time and it might sound strange, but it was a sad moment. I felt that I'm missing this darkness so much and I want to experience this darkness so much again and again and again. And the sun meant for me end of the expedition that I felt sadness with it. I feel a very special connection there. I feel like mother for a child. I feel a care there. I feel like a love there. And I feel that I want to do everything, what is in my hand, to take care of it, to, to protect it. And the only thing I can really hope that people will listen, that the changes are happening now. This is in our hand now, if we can protect it or if we destroy it.